Now, joining us to discuss all this, I'm so excited to say he plays center for the Boston Celtics, NBA player, new American citizen like myself, Ennis Cantor Freedom. And it's I'm so happy to to talk to you about all this. I was just thinking, you know, we both became American citizens this year. And, and yep. you know, if it's a contest about who loves America more, I, I was just thinking, you know, <laughs> you actually changed your name to freedom. So I think you got that one. First of all, thanks for having me. And second, congratulations for becoming a part of the greatest nation in the world. Um, you know, I think I remember first time coming here in 2009, uh, you know, my dream to become a part of this great uh, nation because, you know, this country has, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, freedom of press. And, you know, the reason I, I wanted to make that work part of me and carry it everywhere I go, first, I wanted to educate our young generation because, you know, there are yes. so many problems that are happening all over the world, but I wanted to, all the kids out there, to research what freedom means, you know? So that word was just mean uh, world to me. And it's so interesting, um, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I hear this a lot, you know, that those of us who come here, you know, we, and, and, and we sort of, if, if you like, buy into all the best things about America and we understand and deeply revere it. Um, but it does feel like some people, in, and, and perhaps increasingly, take it for granted. And that's why it's important that those of us who really appreciate it, we say so. I mean, I'll, I'm just going to tell you this. I'm coming from a country, you know, where you, when you criticize your government, your family will be in jail and tortured. You know, when you criticize the government, your password will be revoked and your name will be Interpol, on an uh, Interpol list. You know, they're going to call you international criminal. They're going to call you terrorist. So more often, you know, we, I sit down with my friends, with my teammates and with my, you know, uh, colleagues and talk about how blessed and how lucky we are to be in this situation. And obviously, you know, America have, uh, have our own problems, but we should, people should feel really blessed to be in this situation because, because we have checks and balances. And um, so that's why I'm like, yeah, this is great. Exactly. And look, it's, it's interesting because I used to, for when I was back in the UK, one of the things I used to really admire about America was it felt to me like that, that sort of positive idea of patriotism. Everyone bought into it in a way that in the UK they didn't. It was a bit, it was uncool to be patriotic in the UK when I was growing up. But I thought America mm -hmm. was different. But now I'm here, especially in the last few years, it feels like that's changing. What's been the reaction? You know, got so, you've got so many young fans, your teammates, you know, you're, you're, you're mm. a cool guy. Uh, what, what do they say when you're doing something <laughs> that these days may not seem so cool, which is to be proudly patriotic? You know, I remember every time I check in a game, the whole crowd gave me a standing ovation and they start calling me freedom, freedom. It just gives me so <laughs> much hope and so much motivation to fight. And even like when I'm on the street, when I'm walking on a, you know, or when I go to a restaurant or when I go to grocery shopping, people are just telling me, hello, Mr. Freedom. Good morning, Mr. Freedom. You know, how are you doing today? It just, it just, whenever I seen this, you know, whenever I seen people just loves their country. It just gives me so much hope and motivation to fight for what's right. Like I said again, you know, obviously, uh, I mean, there are problems that are happening all over the world, you know? And obviously, there are yeah. some problems that are happening in America too, but obviously we can just talk about it. And the important thing is, we need to educate our young generation so we won't have the same problems we are having uh, right now. You know what that makes me think, and this is the last question to you, is, um, is that mm -hmm. real people, like in real life, as you're experiencing, they're, they're not negative about America. It's actually this portrayal, the kind of snooty elite, perhaps in the media, the kind of, you know, and they look down on America, but real people, real Americans don't. You know, I think, uh, I'm, I'll just uh, say this, you know, it just, you know, if you look at throughout the whole world, you know, you have countries like, like dictatorships, like Venezuela, Iran, Belarus, uh, Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, Turkey. 
But I feel like, you know, once you live in those countries, once you live in those dictatorships, then you understand how blessed you are to be in this situation. There are rules of laws, checks and balances, there is democracy, there is, you know, the freedom of speech, children expression and press. You know, all you, all you gotta do is just, you know, just work hard. And the one goal, how can we, how can I make this country better together? That's the uh, important question you need to ask every day. I absolutely love it. Ennis Cantor, Freedom. Mr. Freedom, so happy to talk to you today. Um, Merry Christmas to you. Um, great to see you and you best too. of luck.